Greetings there, my fellow defense fleet. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector, Scrappy Privateer. Episode 14, Defending Home. Now, you guys um, had me... The, the whole purpose of like putting my ships together here was to survey that, that Terran world up here. And I'm um, headed back up there. Also, there was um, this world, I, if I recall correctly, had... Uh, no, which one? There was another world that I, I didn't have the means to survey. But at the very least, I know the Terran world I didn't. So let's go back to the Terran world while you guys vote on that poll. It would, if if I did try to spin up defenses on those other two worlds, it would take a considerable lag time. So whatever the case, whatever the result of this poll is, I'm definitely going to have to like undry dock the Paragon and fight myself. Uh, if I want to defend against the um, um, the church raid. Oh wow, there's a lot happening in the core right now. And a lot of pirate missions being offered too. Derelict ship, derelict ship. But again, that's not what I'm working on. No, one of the beautiful things is um, <clears throat> the way station on Agroville is going to make it very, very easy for me to colonize other planets because Agroville has a supply of crew that it can draw from for the colonization process, making it um, a lot less painful than before. Plentiful organics, moderate ore, sparse rare ore. So that's actually negative, the sparse rare ore, because the bountiful farmland can't be soil nanited. Vast ruins, and it's obviously a class five. So there's a ton of stuff to mine here. Um, and there's um, vast ruins to tech mine. Uh, wow, that is a lot of volatiles. have room for it all at so many volatiles I am going to put these volatiles into a stable orbit so that I can come back for them I didn't go back for the organs and heavy armaments that um that I had found but uh I wonder if that's still in orbit it might have been too long and then I surveyed the other planet, um, which is really not of any interest. It's a hot world. It would be better if it was very hot, because then it would benefit from the cryoarithmetic engine. Um, there's also the research station, but I don't have any uh, inventory space for its stuff. So it's probably best that I don't interact with it this time around and come back for whatever's in the resource station once I dump my stuff to a market. And it is official. You guys want me to try to colonize to protect myself. So I think the priority right now is to um, colonize other worlds in near Agrava. But I obviously need, I need to go back to Bellachor or whatever it's called. What is it called? Bellachor. And, and possibly even colonize that Terran world, although having colonies on opposite ends of the core uh, would, would be honestly very annoying. But then when it comes time to defend yourself, you have to jump back and forth. So unless you have like gates and, a, a, and teleports, it's not fun. And I don't, so not fun. So when are they attacking me? Uh, when I hit 500? So it's probably going to be a month or two. 
which is plenty of time to get down there, ramp up my fleet, and uh, kick some kick some of them in the teeth. I'm gonna hold on to the survey data for the the super world that I just surveyed, because I don't. It's role playing. Like the pirates don't act on it, but I'd rather not share those secrets with anyone. Role playing wise. Plus, it's just not worth enough money to uh, for me to feel the need to. So let's get down to Langolata. So I will pick up this slipstream. I'm gonna actually try to pick it up just so that we can ride it as much as we can for um, topography. I'll pick it up from the head of uh, the stream. <laughs> so I traded. I traded enough volatiles with the pirates to become improve my relationship, and then the Persian League was like, how dare you? And it, they got upset. Nowhere. I love laughing at the core worlds and their silly little governments. Whoa, this stream's even longer. Okay, nice. Ride the worm. Now, one um, probably negative consequence of colonizing that arid world is if I do set up farming, which is tempting to do, it's going to further piss off Tritac. Because um, Tritac's already mad at me from competing exports. So I'm only going to make it worse. Uh, but they're only five out of the all the colony threats that I have. So, like, it's kind of a... It's going to be very quickly a drop in the bucket. Essentially, the galaxy likes the status quo, and anything that threatens the status quo of the galaxy, i.e. you, the player, um, being some sort of opposition, whether for um, commodity exports or military or whatever it is, uh, everyone hates you for it. That's just how it'd be. So, gotta be careful when, um, when you decide to throw some weight around. So, colonize time. Let's go ahead and take... Troop transport. And any other ship with mm, high max crew. I can also start to refit these other ships for high max crew too. Um, so take Marauder. It doesn't really matter if I'm like under my skeleton crew numbers because I'll be under the skeleton crew numbers so briefly that I won't suffer too much. But, um, But I'd rather even not. So I think... Yes. So my skeleton crew is a th less than a thousand less than my max capacity. I said that in the most confusing way possible. But um, hopefully you understand. I can also... Oh, I can also... Additional berthing of the, um, the troop transport. So that's probably all I really needed, to be honest. In fact, this max crew 244, let's ditch skull. Okay, no, I that, not quite. So I will, the two mules I will set up as um, troop transports instead of what they are now. So additional berthing. Um, And auto fit you. I don't care how you're fit. But with additional berthing and better thrusters. So now with those refits, it's 160 crew capacity per. Easily, I can now store the amount of crew I need to colonize and then not be below combat readiness loss. I do have a Paragon, yeah. All right, so here we go. I will do um, Xenon's Frozen World first. It's too bad it's not a hot world, man. If it was a small little volcanic hot world, that would have been so meta. I would have been 
you know, with ores. That's what you really want to find. Like, my two cents is you tend to want like some sort of farm world to be able to support your population, and then some some sort of like mineral rich hot world. And if you find both in the same system that have low hazard ratings, that's like great, and you should settle there. And that's not what we found, and I haven't done enough survey, but survey is such a time intensive process that takes so long that unless you get really lucky, sometimes you just have to pull off the band-aid and like settle with what you got. Uh, there's also a possibility to, um, uh, so we, we can also mine volatiles here uh, for some fuel production. Um, it won't benefit from the synchrotron core. And while I'm here, I might as well just survey all of the systems uh, in my home turf so that they're all fully known. Because I, I have um, I have specialized survey equipment. Plentiful volatiles. That's actually not that bad. There's a, a decent amount of mining to be done on Katie's. So maybe I should reassess. Um, between all the worlds that are here. So this is abundant volatiles. Oh no, and this has plentiful. This has abundant ores and sparse rare ores. And this has just sparse rare ores. I actually think that the 25 increased hazard rating is worth it given what is on this other planet. So I'm gonna change what I'm actually um, colonizing. I'll colonize Katie's instead. If I do find another fullerene spool, it only has regular tectonic activity, not extreme tectonic activity. So it can hypothetically benefit from a fullerene spool as well. Whereas like obviously a gas giant can't. You can't ever put a fullerene spool on a gas giant. So Katie's, we are establishing a colony here. And um, I don't know what name. So a giveaway for an entire planet. Good luck guys. So I'll give it a generic name for now and I'll be renaming it at some point. So I'm going to be paying hazard pay. As you can see, due to the high, um, uh, due to the really high hazard rating, um, it's a very hazardous system and nobody wants to move there unless I like pay them to. What I can do is go grab the fullerene spool from Agriville and install it here. It will actually benefit more if I do that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the fullerene spool on this world. And then um, immediately I am going to set up I'm going to set up um, a patrol HQ as soon as I have the fully built starport. So maybe I'll do mining. So here's the issue is mining. I can mine volatiles, ores, and, and transplutonic ores, but then I would need to refine them to change those ores into metals and transplutonics. And then the heavy industry needs metals and transplutonics to make ships. So the other thing I could do is I could add a refinery I can add mining here and heavy industry here and then refinery back at um, at Agroville to have the ores mined here, exported out to Agroville, refined, and then imported back to support heavy industry. And I think that's probably the way to do it, to spread around the um, um, that stuff. So, meaning, it makes sense to set up mining now so that we have the, the ores that then we can refine. So then over at um, Agarville, I will add a refining industry to be able to take those raw ores and produce metals and transplutonics with them. We will need to import sizable amounts of transplutonics because there's not a lot of transplutonics on Katie's um, in order to, uh, to, to meet demand. But that's fine. So let's head over to Agriville and um, grab that fuller spool so that we can uh, we can help Katie's grow quicker, or whatever it's going to be named in two and a half minutes. Cheers. Ooh, and here it is. So here's the church takeover. Um. The Lutter forces are not nominally hostile, but will harass shipping and attempt to maintain control of the volume around the colony. And they're strong, and I'm outmatched. 
Now I'm outmatched, but not with what I have in Dry Dock. So right now the current priority is colonize a new planet and defend against the LUDs. So I need to um, spool up that Paragon, clearly. So, readying myself for war. Uh, got a Paragon, so let's make sure that it is, um... Auto-fitted? Decently? I might do a little bit of the building myself. Do I have two tack lances? I don't. So I see what's going on. I, do, I have... I have... One of every type of, like, major big weapon. Plasma Cannon, I only have one. Tack Lance, I only have one. Auto Pulse, I only have one. So this ship is going to be really, really, really annoying to pilot myself. So I'm probably going to have the AI pilot it, but AI pilots Paragons pretty well. Um, so that's not unreasonable. I might change its... Um, its hall mods, though. So... How many beaten weapons do I have? This is a... Uh, this is a beam. I only have one beam weapon, so it doesn't really make sense for the singular beam weapon to get advanced optics. Um, so fair enough. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, actually... Stabilized shields would be a good one to reduce the amount of um, constant soft flux and then to convert some of the hard flux to soft flux. And then, I'm trying to think what else is going to be uh, really effective here. So I do already have an advanced targeting core, so extends the range of ballistic and energy weapons. Um, Nick the Good, do you, I'm assuming you want to be a planet rather than a ship. I'm going to give you the option to choose here. I'm trying to think what else is going to be effective. Uh, extended, well, I don't need extended shields because it's already 360. So maybe actually the game was right. Flux, coil, and distributors just for an insane power pool. Because I could try to do ECM warfare, but I don't think that that's going to be all that... So maybe I'll do auxiliary thrusters and then um, flux venting. And yeah, flux capacity. All right, I didn't really change it much, but um, that's a pretty decent ship. I might want to look it over and and make sure that all the all the slots are like not obnoxious, because sometimes the AI makes it obnoxious. All right, so Nick the Good is a planet. Lorx. Not only did you gift out subs, but now you're named for something. So I need to find wherever Nick is. The um, the cargo ship. And you are now the cargo ship. Lorax. Pendra. Uh, I spelled your name wrong. Sorry. Hold up. There we go. So that... Let's look over again. So two grab beams actually in the front is really nice. Grab beams are very, very powerful. The Sal Salamander MRMs I'm gonna remove because they're that's a poor use. And I think I'm actually gonna remove this autopulse laser and just put in an all pulser for suppression. Um, because the autopulse laser is a little bit overkill to be only facing off to like the left side of the ship. So a huge amount of my, um, of the defense of this, um, of my system hinges upon how effective I build this Paragon. So I'm going to spend a second here. So really good 
the best like burst PD lasers are really amazing for burst defense. Um, but I only have one of them. So IR pulse lasers would be a close second, and I have six of those. So maybe the in the back I'll put the burst PD laser, so that um, EMP shots that are trying to knock out the engines get shot down, and then I'll put the IR pulse. Uh, the IR pulse lasers as point defense. They're general, but they I believe they work against point defense as well, if I'm not mistaken, on the sides. For small missiles, uh, I don't know if there's really, maybe swarmer SRMs might be reasonable to keep the Paragon from being swarmed. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do swarmer SRM launchers in those small slots for anti-small craft. Because that's something that um, that can overwhelm capital ships is just to be swarmed by fighters where they, it, get, it gets overwhelmed. The medium universal slots here is... I'll probably not do energy because I'm out of a really good energy slots. Uh, dual flat cannons would actually be pretty gnarly for point defense. So I'll put those in. Uh, back here, we just want more point defense or IR pulse. Or tack lasers. Actually, general tack lasers are really not a bad choice. So maybe I'll put um, the tactical lasers in the front, paired with the grav beams. And then I'll put a pair of tack lasers here on the sides, which could be pretty good at anti-harass. So I have a lot more beams on the ship than I had originally realized, so it might be worth investing in beam range. Um, so IR pulse lasers in these small slots. And then I have two medium slots in the back. That are empty. So two general pulse lasers. Uh, yeah, I guess. That's actually, considering that these are all salvaged weapons, this is really not a bad loadout. Like, this is very respectable. Um, so with all the beams that I have, the advanced optics would give all the beam we weapons 200 range. Um, making it harder for small crafts to take cheeky shots on the Paragon without them being within range. Whereas the high scatter amplifier does them more damage and deals hard flux. Um, man, maybe maybe high scatter, maybe both. Oh, uh, it's one or the other. So let's do high scatter. It's just I need another tack lance. Yeah, absolutely. I just need to find one. So yeah, I this... This is a decent. Now, the big thing is what captain to put in here. So it's probably going to be a captain... Energy Weapon Mastery Captain, probably. Um, gunnery and plants aren't terrible either. So Wishbringer... But Wishbringer has a missile spec. Ballistic, Impact, Combat, and Ordnance. Yeah, Aziac. Definitely is the man to go in there anyone with an energy weapon. It's unfortunate that this is not a elite version, but still, it's it means that energy weapons deal more damage the closer they are. So anything that gets close to this Paragon gets melted. I think that's pretty reasonable. Alright. So my missile spec is in Destroy with Roy, and actually that might not be the right choice. Uh, pulling out Marauder and refitting Marauder as a fire support. Oh, these are all salamanders and hurricane mervs. Can I do better than that? I would rather have annihilator rocket pods. Salamanders are like... So the, the advantage of salamanders is they knock engines out um, and they cost no flux to fire and they have... In, they, they're not ammo counted. Um, but I don't find them effective most of the time. Most of the time, the... Um, the rockets get shot down and um, 
and and don't hit anything. So I am also going to do Locus SRM small craft launcher. So this this missile ship is just going to launch and maybe some pressure on the sides. Do I have two Annihilator rocket pods? Pylums are really good for long range support, but only if you design your ship in such a way that like that's what they're using, which is not how it's designed. So I'll do the Annihilator and the proximity. So this ship is just missile support, but it has some really seriously dangerous missiles slapped on it. And then if anything gets too close, they get needled, which is okay. So this is not a terrible ship, and I want to put my missile spec person in there, Wishbringer. No, not rename. So that I have more missiles to use. And then in the Eradicator, uh, maybe the Mage. I don't have two people that have missile spec, so... Maybe Febreze, actually. All right, taking more ships. So, uh, I think I'm going to eat the cost of like running a full fleet. Because I know what's coming and I'm going to need like all hands on deck to defend against these LUDs. Or maybe I know. I mean, maybe I smoke them, but I don't want to leave it to chance. So I need at least 14, I need 1,500 to fully staff. There we go. Fully staffed. So let's uh, move some of the other captains that are in non-combat ships into combat ships. And also, uh, Lynx needs to be refitted. Autolance, Sal Salamander, ugh. Uh, Annihilator. So it's a, it's a decent fleet. It's weird that I'm not like in the biggest ship, but um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to control that Paragon more effectively than AI, sadly. It's considered a personal insult. I'm saying that Paragon, well, I don't know. It's actually not that hard to control. It's just Tachyon and Pulse, and I can auto do one of them. I still don't think that I'm the right person for that role though, because I have all industry skills. I don't have combat skills and my captains have combat skills. So they're probably actually better suited skill-wise for that role. So I actually don't have a ton of combat ships in this fleet. Um, I also might want to retool the mules for combat because right now they're just um, personnel carriers. So let's do that as well. Get rid of birthing. Actually, I'm just going to auto fit them entirely. Have the AI say what's best because uh, I don't want to overthink it. The They're not very effective ships. So the difference between a really well designed mule and a really poorly designed mule is very little. In other words. So there we go, we have auto-assigned officers. Everybody has a role, everybody is ready. And I can put the support ships away. I don't really need them now. So we're all combat. It's too bad I don't have more combat ships, but these aren't combat ships. These are all support ships that are going to lend me no aid in a fight. So they are going to depart from at Eos Exodus in six days. There's five separate fleets. So I'm going to definitely want to be dividing and conquering. And the reason I pulled my ships out now is so that um, if there's any bonuses to combat readiness or whatever, I'm gaining those bonuses. And it also might make sense to um, to hunt, to actually go out there and try to snipe some of their fleets before they even make it uh, planet side. 
So I'm pulling the spool out here and putting it in Nick the Good. So that Nick the Good can grow quick. Because I need to grow at least once in order to unlock a slot for... Well, who are you? Who are you? Oh, Commerce Raiders. Okay. Man, that was an overtuned fleet. Jesus. I think one of them had three S mods. Like, yikes. That is a. That's souped up. And three days left for the spaceport. So I'll just. I'll hover here for three days and then install the spool. That will help with growth a lot. And also the fact that there's a larger non-hostile colony in the same system helps with growth because the uh, um, there will be immigrants from aggro. Um, so let's go ahead and I don't have the money to upgrade to, to Megaport. Um, I barely have the money to upgrade Orbital Station. The patrol HQ would be ideal, but again, lacking money. So I think I'm just, this is as much as I can do for now. <sighs> There's a Luddick path, come here. Pursue, and I'm gonna order my second in command to just smoke him. So I'm picking some of my not fully leveled up captains and telling them to go eat some Lud pathers. And it actually reduced the crisis that I have a little bit because hostile ships got destroyed. I mean, negligible because it's like a micro fleet, so it wasn't much of a benefit. But if I can kill these little religious zealots, uh, yeah, you better believe I'm going to do it. So the monthly expenses here were mostly from stockpiles withdrawn from fleet. So I should be breaking even next month. Um, colony crisis. Well back. Uh, 18 days. So they're close. Their entire fleet is gone now. Well, the tiny fleet. I just didn't want to have to fight that myself. It was kind of beneath me. Did they level up, though? No, not even close. Nope. Nope. They're still so far from leveling. This upcoming battle, though, might change that a bit. So are you part of the attack fleet? Yes, I think you are. I think this is one that arrived early. Knights of Lud, Sacred Protectors, patrolling the system and harassing it. Okay, um, I'm gonna save a copy just in case something goes real awry, but I think it's time to start fighting. So this is comms request. Um, I can pay them off or I can lie that I've been faithful or tell them to go shove it and spin up my weapons, which is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tell everybody to support 
the Paragon and the Paragon to take the Sensor Jammer. As controlling the Sensor Jammer is going to increase um, weapon range for our fleet by a little. And I want all of the ships to stick together so they can't get singled out. Generally speaking, LUDs come with a lot of swarmy low-tech ships with bad shields and um, and uh, a lot of missiles. So being caught out on your own is a really good way to lose a lot of ships really quickly against the LUDs. Your best kind of cutting them hot knife through butter, going after the most powerful missile ships like Eradicators. They all should probably... Sh I think they had Moras in this instance, but often I find that they roll in with um, uh, Eradicators and Enforcers um, and obviously Colossi, but Colossi are like weak as hell ships that are of no significance. As long as you have a decent loadout. So they quick capped this sensor jammer, but I'll cap it back from them. So that we control it and our enemy ECM ratings will be in the positive, hopefully. Meaning that we have better range. So, yep, that is an eradicator. Put the skin in the game. Paragon, go attack the Eradicator. There we go. We're basically broken even with um, enemy ECM rating versus us, meaning that they don't get a range bonus. So here's that sort of spammy garbage that I was talking about. where they have a lot of little dinky ships and they just swarm you with numbers. But if we support the Paragon and cover our flanks, uh, we can punch a hole in them. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. That Mora uh, on the left there is going to be rough to take care of. Oh no, the Paragon's going... Okay, full assault. Paragon kind of went too deep, and it's blowing itself up pretty effective, ineffectively. I'm going to start to support it with uh, my Typhoon missiles. Cerberus got disabled, that's okay. My Eradicator is... I don't... Maybe it's being effective? It's hard to tell. Uh, the Paragon was endangered, but it was pretty effective when it went in. Because it shocked their ships and dispersed them. And I just got a really good Typhoon missile on that, uh, Condor. This is definitely one of those situations where, like, I'm gonna have to bleed a little to make... Oh, yeah, they're dead. I'm gonna have to bleed a little to make progress here. But... The positive thing is I should probably get enough experience if I win to level up and then get that um, hull restoration skill, which is going to be enormously uh, beneficial. They are starting a retreat. Oh, Jesus. Help. Paragon help. Nope, I got popped. That's okay. Ship is dis disabled, not destroyed. And the Paragon is uh, punching holes. So in this instance, the ship I could probably most control next would be this um, Enforcer. So I'm going to transfer my little command pod from my broken ship over to the Enforcer and take control of the Enforcer. The Hammerhead got destroyed. That's all right. It was... Um, not an effective ship for longevity of battle. We took out another Condor, which is good. And any of the ships that get destroyed, um, there's a very high likelihood of me being able to recover them at the end of the fight. Oh, I don't want to go against a Mora by myself. 
But no, okay, there's backup here. I want to just pick out this Vanguard, though, because it's like... It's got like 1% haul left. Oh, and it raced away from me. There we go. Uh, me, the other Enforcer, and then the... Um, the missile ship is going to pick on this Mora. Moras are really hard to kill because their special ability is that, like, hull enforcement, where when you hear them buzzing and shining like that, they're, like, in almost impossible to hurt. It's really, it's really, uh, effective defense. Unless I, I harpoon them or reap them and knock their shields out, which is what I just did. Get them! I know I'm almost over flux, but there was no follow-up shots. I think I ran out of uh, harpoons, and I just overloaded myself like a dummy. So I'm I'm falling back. But you can see the um, the missile the the missile ship's pressure of constant missiles um, is really really effective for those ships that are um, hard to take down. So we they are defeated. Um, whoops! I just flamed myself out like a boron. So I could claim victory, but I'd rather try to destroy as much as I can, because it's going to be better for experience that way. So these two ships take out the Mora. Paragon go for the Mule, if the Mule won't run. My Mule go against their Lasher. Eradicator go against the... Uh, the Mule as well. This Mule go against that La uh, Shepherd. So everybody has sort of a... an assignment. And I'm going to try to maximize experience from this engagement. And then make as many repairs as I can. This Enforcer is just not putting skin in the game against that Mora, though. It's pissing me off. It's like hanging back and doing very little. I think it's designed poorly, where um, it has a long-range weapon that it is plinking with. But not getting close enough to actually be effective. Because that will that's what happens. Like if you put a thousand range weapon on your ship and then a bunch of like four hundred range weapons, what often happens is like the ship will never get to the four hundred range and just sit at a thousand range and never really fight truly. So it's it's in a way poor ship design, and that's because I didn't spend the time to design it intelligently. Uh, which is on me, obviously. I really want to kill this Mora. I'd also like to kill the Eradicator that's behind it, too. Oh, uh, the Eradicator's... I don't even know where it is. I think it, it's trying to retreat. But this, this Mora's going down. From the high-pressure missiles from that, uh, that ship. Boom! Gone. Alright. Uh, let's try to find the Eradicator if they haven't retreated already. Yep, yep, they're up here. They're, uh, thousand units, um... I'm going to try to cut them off, but they're very close to escaping. We can also pursue them, even if they do escape. With any of the ships that have high enough combat readiness to uh, continue fighting. To sort of destroy their fleet more fully. You can see the other Eradicator burn driving. No, they, they got out. That was a good fight. That was a really good fight. We were outmatched and we still won. So I am going to pursue them. The fleet is either operating in a legally gray area, or its behavior falls out the accepted norms, so engaging in battle will not cause immediate hostilities. So basically, they came to fight, so I'm not being blamed for fighting. Uh, I'm going to do second command to handle it. And I'm going to send the Griffin and the Paragon and this Enforcer to clean up, because they're the most intact of my fleet. Cool. So we destroyed them basically fully. Uh, recovering the Manticore. The Hammerhead I'm actually going to let die. And the Combat Freighter I'm going to let die. But I'm also going to recover their Eradicator for story points. Be um, maybe just the more intact one. The other one is way kind of destroyed. Picking through the wreckage. Ah. Uh... <laughs> There's more records than I have space for. And I leveled up. Hall restoration time. Nice. 
So, uh, we have yet another, uh, a day of Thanksgiving. Oh god, you gotta need to get renamed immediately. <laughs> it has LUD names. Um, so you are gonna be the AAX LUD. And you're gonna be given a better name in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna head back to... Is there... Yeah, there should be a debris field here to pick over. I don't want a buffalo. So I'm going to head back to Agraville to retool the LUD ship that we just picked up. And soon we should see D mods being um, removed from our fleet. Because I now have hull restoration, which is just awesome. Especially uh, that we're about to go into a big fight. So I need some more crew. Actually, I'm just going to crew max. Kenick, thank you for the uh, the sub. I'll drink to that, dude. And good luck in the raffle. So here's my love, Lafleet. And this X lud I am going to auto fit as an assault. Ew. Salamander? All salamander? No, let me fix that. That's just dumb. Annihilator. Swarmer. Annihilator. Hammer. Reaper. That's a little smarter. The rest of it is kind of okay. I mean, I don't really have a ton of ballistic weapons to be able to pick, cherry pick. Uh, anyway. And then I will promote GD to manning the Eradicator, because that's a better ship. Oh, Open Sprocket doesn't have a ship either. Oh, because Open Sprocket, I think, was in um, Guitar Lillen, which I didn't recover, just because I don't need a tiny little combat frigate. Um, so, sorry, Guitar Lillen. But... We not only took out one of their night brigades, but then we actually have more ships at our disposal as a result of that fight. So uh, very much a net positive, which is very awesome to come away with. Um, that and I also leveled up. And also probably some of my officers leveled up too. No, they didn't. Nope. They got close. They got a lot of experience, but not quite leveled up. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 3rd and February 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that this is a series from a marathon stream, meaning that changes cannot be made to the series. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or also at rodamont.com. Additionally, in the description of this video is a link to the details about this series, if you're wondering about the scenario series rules or goals. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow privateers.